Welcome, fellow history enthusiasts, to Turkic Tales, the channel that brings to life the enthralling narratives and rich heritage of the Turkic people. Today we embark on a riveting expedition, delving into the epic tale of a legendary figure Orhan Ghazi, whose name echoes through the corridors of history. Orhan Ghazi, the second bey of the Ottoman Beylik, from 1324 to 1362, was a remarkable figure in the history of the Ottoman Empire. Born in 1281 in Sogut, he was the son of Osman Ghazi and Malhun Hatun. Orhan Ghazi, also known as Orhan Bey, inherited a significant legacy as the son of Osman Ghazi, the founder of the Ottoman Empire. From a young age, Orhan Bey was groomed by his father to assume leadership and witnessed the gradual establishment of the Ottoman state. He actively participated in key battles, demonstrating his skills as a commander during his father's reign. Notably, he served as the governor of Sultanonu, which is the present-day central province of Eskisahir. At the age of 17, Orhan Bey married Holofira, the daughter of a Byzantine lord or governor known as Yarhisar Tekfur. Remarkably, Holofira embraced Islam and adopted the name Nilufar in her newfound faith. Orhan Bey assumed leadership after his father's death in either 1323 or 1324. Despite offering to share power with his brother Aladdin, Aladdin respected their father's wishes and accepted revenues from a single village near Bursa. Orhan appointed Aladdin as vizier, responsible for governance and guiding the people, focusing on establishing civil and military institutions. Under Aladdin's leadership, the first organic laws of the Ottoman state were drafted, leading to the formation of a standing army with regular salaries and tax exemptions. The government headquarters were relocated to Bursa, where Orhan built a mosque in 1335. Loyal commanders from Osman Ghazi's time were appointed as governors in newly conquered regions. In 1331, Orhan faced the Byzantine emperor Andronikos III Palaiologos, at the Battle of Pelikanon near Istanbul. Despite injuries, Orhan's adeptness in nocturnal warfare led to victory, with the Byzantine Emperor retreating and losing his princes. Approximately 275 Ottoman soldiers sacrificed their lives in the battle. Orhan Ghazi, after his victory at Iznik in 1331, displayed generosity by allowing Byzantine citizens to choose their fate. The conquest of Iznik caused uproar in Europe and Constantinople. The Ottoman Empire continued expanding by capturing Gemlik and Izmit, advancing towards the Bosporus. Legendary tales surrounded the conquest of castles like Eidos Castle, where a Tekfur's daughter fell in love with the Ottoman leader after dreaming of him and opened the gates for him. As the Ottomans approached the Bosporus, the Byzantine Empire gradually lost its eastern territories. The first peace treaty between the Ottomans and Byzantines was signed in 1341, fostering friendly relations. Orhan peacefully conquered the neighboring Karasid Beylik in 1345, with its princes joining Ottoman service, strengthening the empire. Amidst a power struggle in the Byzantine Empire, John VI Cantacuzenos seized the throne from the young John V Palaiologos. To solidify his rule, Cantacuzenos orchestrated strategic marriages between his daughters and the emperors of Byzantium and the Ottomans. Orhan Ghazi, ruler of the Ottomans, supported Cantacuzenos by marrying his daughter Theodora and sending troops to reinforce his forces. Orhan Ghazi was invited to Istanbul as a guest by Cantacuzenos, enjoying the city's sights from Uskudar. However, their alliance quickly dissolved when Cantacuzenos betrayed Orhan Ghazi by contacting the Pope. In response, Orhan Ghazi swiftly occupied Uskudar and the Prince's Islands, ending Byzantine control over the Anatolian coast in 1352. During this turbulent period, Byzantine governors in Rumelia acted independently, leading to chaos and rebellion. The Catalans, Byzantine mercenaries, caused unrest through looting and violence. Surrounded by Ottoman forces in the east and facing pressure from other regional powers, the Byzantine Empire suffered from trade disruptions and territorial losses. 
Cantacuzenos chronicled these challenges in his history book, shedding light on the empire's decline. The Byzantine Empire's struggles during this time revealed the precarious state of its governance and the increasing influence of the Ottomans in the region. Emperor Cantacuzenos sought Orhan Ghazi's aid against the Serbs and Bulgarians, granting the Ottomans a military base in Gallipoli in 1354. Suleiman Pasha, Orhan Ghazi's successor, led an army into Rumelia, defeating the emperor's foes and establishing Ottoman control. The Ottomans crossed into Rumelia using ships, including some Ottoman vessels and others rented from the Genoese. Cantacuzenos attempted to negotiate the withdrawal of Ottoman forces by offering 10,000 gold coins, but was rejected by Orhan Ghazi. Desperate, Cantacuzenos sought alliances with Balkan kingdoms but failed, leading to his deposition in 1355. The Ottomans solidified their presence in Rumelia, paving the way for future European expansion. This event demonstrated the growing power of the Ottoman Empire and the consequences faced by those who sought its assistance. John Fev Palaiologos, the Byzantine emperor, sought to maintain positive relations with Orhan Ghazi, the Ottoman ruler. In a gesture of goodwill, John V Palaiologos intended to rescue Sezade Halil, Orhan Ghazi's son, who had been abducted by the Genoese and taken to Foca, with the aim of arranging a marriage between him and his own daughter. However, the emperor engaged in covert communications with the Pope, exploring the possibility of obtaining support from the Catholic Church by converting to Catholicism. Meanwhile, Orhan Ghazi's sons, Suleiman and Murad Bey, continued the expansion of Ottoman territories in Rumelia. The local populace willingly accepted their new rulers, as they respected religious freedom and protected the lives and property of the inhabitants. Vacant lands in the conquered regions were resettled by Muslim migrants from Anatolia, while Christian villagers received aid from soup kitchens established in Muslim villages, fostering positive relations between communities. The conversion of some locals to Islam further illustrated the impact of Ottoman influence. Following the death of Orhan Ghazi's brother, Aladdin Pasha, in 1331, Suleiman Pasha assumed the position of vizier and became the crown prince. Exploiting the ongoing power struggle within the Aretnids, a principality in central Anatolia, Suleiman conquered Ankara in 1354. Orhan Ghazi's strategic focus was primarily on expanding Ottoman influence in Byzantine territories and Rumelia, rather than engaging in conflicts with Anatolian principalities aligning with his broader mission. Orhan Ghazi, the renowned Ottoman Sultan, left an indelible mark on history through his remarkable achievements and tragic fate. Widely known for his expansionist policies, he ruled over vast territories, expanding his dominion nearly sixfold from his father's legacy. At the time of his death, Orhan Ghazi's rule extended over a staggering 95,000 square kilometers across two continents. Sadly, Orhan Ghazi's life was plagued by personal sorrow. Devastated by the untimely death of Suleiman Pasha, the governor of Rumelia, and overwhelmed by grief, he experienced a mental collapse in the following years. In his final moments, he imparted valuable advice to his son, Sezada Murad I, before passing away in Bursa in 1362 at the age of 80. Orhan Ghazi's tomb lies adjacent to that of his father, perpetuating their legacy together. Orhan Ghazi's reign witnessed a significant population boom, with his territories encompassing approximately three million people. Notably, he achieved a religiously diverse balance by encouraging Muslim immigration from Anatolia, creating harmony among the predominantly Christian population. Moreover, the philanthropic spirit of Orhan Ghazi's first wife, Nilufer Hatun, remains an enduring testament to their rule. She contributed greatly to society, commissioning the construction of three mosques, a lodge, and a bridge in Bursa. Her significant contributions and longevity earned her the esteemed title of the first Valide Sultan, the mother of a ruling sultan within the Ottoman Empire. Orhan Ghazi's legacy, marked by territorial expansion, a harmonious populace and philanthropy, 
continues to shape the narrative of the Ottoman Empire's early years. Discovering the extraordinary life and legacy of Orhan Ghazi has been truly captivating. Share your thoughts and suggestions below. Let us know which Turkic historical figures or aspects you'd like us to explore next on Turkic Tales. Thank you for joining us, and stay tuned for more captivating stories from the Turkic world.